Texans. While the Ravens have soared high since that team could not have gotten off to a better start. You'll be on this journey with me. Hey guys, now joined inside Nats Park. So I think it's safe to say that the 2024 Baltimore Orioles are yet again a whole lot of fun. And here they are on the brink of history coming off their series sweep of the Minnesota Twins. That and more is what I have coming up in this episode, which is presented by my friends at Primary Residential Mortgage. And with that, welcome into the channel. I'm Bobby Trossett. And as always, this is where I bring you Baltimore sports and beyond. I'm glad you're here inside the channel. Let's begin with this. And what a shot, courtesy of Jess Rapfogel here of the Associated Press. Look at the hydration station, the Homer hose, whatever you want to call it. Apparently, it's portable because it was ripped from the dugout taken to home plate as Cedric Mullins left the yard, his first career walk-off homer that lifted the Orioles over the Minnesota Twins on Wednesday afternoon. The O's are now 12-6, and six, getting ready for a road trip, which will begin against the Royals in Kansas City. But look at how Seti has started off a bounce-back campaign in Baltimore. He's enjoying a nine-game hit streak, which, of course, was extended earlier today. And over his last 13 games, he's batting 300. he He's got four homers, 11 RBIs, 11 runs, and three stolen bases. He is a menace. On As soon as he gets on base, he is a ridiculously talented and just re- – the amount of space that he covers in center field is uncanny. And so he's a gold glover. Somebody who's bounced back really well at the plate, timely hitting, power hitting, you name it, he's got it. He's one of those unsung heroes on this team, right? He's not going to get the national pub that Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman are going to command, right? And Jackson Holiday in terms of, even though we'll get to him in just a second, he's really struggling so far, which is not a surprise for these prospects when they get called up. But you get where I'm at, right? Like, he's under the radar nationally. And yet there is no player who plays a more important role than Cedric Mullins does to this team. I love everything he stands for. I love everything he's about. Here's that moment, courtesy of the ballpark cam. High atop Oriole Park in Camden Yards when he sent that one packing. What a day at the yard, man, for a Wednesday afternoon first pitch and, you know, smack dab in the middle of the week and for it to end with fireworks literally and figuratively, that's the best of the best. Cedric Mullins leaves the yard and now look at where the Orioles are just historically. Are you serious? Sarah Langs is all over the statistical nuggets when it comes to not only the O's, but all of Major League Baseball. The Orioles now have three-plus home runs in five straight games. That's tied for the second-longest such streak by any team since 1900. Guess who's the only other team that they're behind? Themselves, the 1987 Baltimore Orioles, who did it in six straight games. So they're flirting with history. And Steve Molesky from Masson, Also noting that the Orioles hit nine home runs in that series, in that sweep of the Minnesota Twins. They've got 20 in the last seven games and 30 on the year. The next closest team, league-wide, has 26 at the time of that tweet. If they hit three on Friday night in Kansas City, they will tie a team mark of six straight games with three or more homers. And that was done again in 1987. May 8th through the 13th. So they can kill you with small ball. They can kill you with power. I know they scuffled against Milwaukee. And this team, I'm sure, will have ebbs and flows throughout the course of a 162-game season. 
There will be ups and downs. Jackson Holiday knows all about that right now. We'll get to his struggles at the plate in just a bit here. But this is a team that's got a little bit of everything, and that flavor will carry him. Now, the AL East is not going to be slowing down. Every single team is 500 or better at the time of this taping on April 17th. That'll be something to be on the lookout for. Before we continue the conversation about this Baltimore dominance, this episode is brought to you by my friends at Primary Residential Mortgage. And if you are thinking of buying a home now or in the next six months, you're ready to get pre-approved. You don't know maybe how much to afford or even where to start. If that's the case, the mortgage experts at PRMI understand that navigating the home buying process can be overwhelming. And that's why they're here to help you every step of the way. You don't necessarily need to be in the Maryland or Baltimore area to use their expertise. You've got 24 branches throughout the country, so you can experience local feel with a national footprint. Over 1,900 families were served in 2023, so experience and expertise are are two things that are guaranteed. They've got a reputation and customer satisfaction score that is extremely impressive at 495 on average terms of the five-star review. They've got a variety of loan program options for you. And with processing and underwriting happening in-house and locally, Primary Residential Mortgage is able to provide smooth settlement from start to finish. The mortgage experts at PRMI are here to guide you through the process, and they're going to provide valuable insights and personalized solutions tailored to your unique situation. So you can get your home buying process started today. And right now, they're featuring an exclusive incentive for Bobby Baltimore subscribers. Until July 1st of 2024, PRMI is going to cover the cost of your appraisal up to $550. You can redeem that by applying through the PRMI Mid-Atlantic website. Just mention my name as you go throughout that process. You can reach out today. They can help you make your dream of owning a home a reality. PRMI is an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 3094 while you're at it. Follow them on social media as well at Primary Residential Mortgage. And a special thanks to PRMI for sponsoring the channel all offseason for football and now even into the peak of baseball season. Right now, the O's are 12-6. and They're coming off a three-game sweep, as I mentioned, of the Minnesota Twins. That's the first home sweep of Minnesota since April of 2016. The O's now have five straight games, hitting at least three homers, like I mentioned, for the first time since 96, and just the third time in team history was 1987. Now, how about this story, though? Talk about a feel-good story. Now, we know, look, Tyler Wells is unavailable. He's down, injured for the time being. John Means trying to work his way back. Don't think there's anything imminent about that. Kyle Bradish. Going to be working with Double A Bowie as soon as this week, or I think he already did this week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think he did yesterday. But anyway, in comes Albert Suarez, okay, who they called up from AAA, and he pitches five and two thirds scoreless innings. That's the most by an Orioles pitcher in a team debut since Jeremy Hellickson did so with seven innings on August 2nd, 2nd, excuse me, of 2017. I mean, that's the type of stuff, right? That's the type of stuff that is a little bit of luck sprinkled in, is a whole lot of great scouting and development and planning by Mike Elias and his crew. And I thought on the Baltimore banner, Danielle Allen Tuck, Orioles beat writer did a fantastic job of profiling uh, Albert, who was about to get on a plane back to South Korea last September, but then the Orioles called him with a minor league deal. Uh, He had a feeling this would lead him back to the majors for the first time in seven years. First time in seven years. That's who the Orioles got a quality start from. A guy who had not sniffed the big leagues in that long. And if that's not a great story, I don't know what is. The Orioles are in really good shape right now when it comes to Corbin Burns and Grayson Rodriguez. There is a drop-off in the rotation after those two studs, right? 
But when you're getting quality starts from a guy, and this isn't going to be the case in October, but when you can weather the storm and have an Albert Suarez come up from the minor leagues and give you five and two-thirds and be in the big leagues for the first time since 2017, yeah, at 34 years of age, I should mention, that's the type of stuff that's going to allow a certain margin for error. And I just, man, the crowd gave him a fantastic standing O. He deserved every, every second of that. Five and two-thirds, three hits allowed, zero runs, zero walks, and four strikeouts. Gets the call the night before. Is that not the best of the best? Like, that fired me up. What a great story that is. Again, that's not going to be sustainable or even a storyline months from now, but that's the type of thing that will allow you to hang around as a club that's waiting for two more starters to bolster your rotation in Bradish and Means. And here's what I'm talking about, though, with Burns and Grayson. All right, you're 1-2, respectively. 4-0 and so far this year when Corbin starts. 4-0 and when G-Rod's on the bump for the O's. These are their guys where, as they go, the Orioles will go, and that's just how it is. Weather the storm so you can get Meansy back at some point in the summer, and perhaps Bradish can regain his form prior to injuring himself last year, and we'll see what he becomes. Because if he can even be a a percentage of what he was a season ago, now that they have Corbin Burns, we'll take it. We'll absolutely take it. It ain't getting any easier, though. Take a look at the AL East. This is no joke. AL East, every single team 500 or better at the time of this taping. The Yankees lead the O's by a half game. I believe they came back and, yeah, they, the Blue Jays had a lead. If I'm not mistaken, the Blue Jays had a lead earlier today and the Yankees came back and won it. So they're atop the division right now in the early going. O's are a half game back. Rays, two and a half out of the lead. Blue Jays, three. And Sox, three and a half. It reminds me of the AFC East. Two different sports, two different divisions, two different games, blah, blah, blah. But these are no joke divisions to play in. Especially next year in football. But this is going to be one hell of a race. Very, very competitive. Don't expect it to get any easier for the O's in any capacity. Appreciate you guys for dropping by the channel. It's great to have baseball back in Baltimore. Hope to see a lot of you out at the yard this season. And with that, I'm going to jump. If you haven't already done so, please like this video if you've been enjoying the content. And subscribe to my YouTube channel right here by clicking that um, by clicking that subscribe button and also hitting that notification bell so you can be notified when my content drops daily on both the O's and the Ravens. Appreciate you guys, and I will talk to you soon.